right, here we go. Designing a Wikidata edit-a-thon for the Black Teacher Archive. Welcome to our talk. This is the topic. Nice. All right, we're gonna, are you, are you doing it? Oh, yeah, okay. We are gonna go through introductions, who we are, what is the BTA and why Wikidata? Pre-edit-a-thon tasks. These are all the major categories of deliverables that were needed, we needed to prepare for the edit-a-thon. Outcomes, what, were, what did we accomplish and what did we learn from this event? And briefly, we'll talk about what's next. Okay, introductions. Next one. Uh, I am Tae Lee. I am the Education Metadata Librarian at Gottman Library of the Harvard Graduate School of Education. I work with the description and access of special collections materials, um, and I consult on metadata needs for digital collections and projects. Um, I have participated in many Wikidata editathons over the years, including ones that Christine has helped to organize, but this was my first time um, planning one from the ground up, and that's an entirely different beast. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Christine Prince of Nelsa. I'm Metadata Technologies Program Manager in Harvard Library Information and Technical Services. Um, and uh, my toxic trait is paying more attention to Wikidata than Wikipedia. And um, I uh, and and I I've really enjoyed um, getting into Wikidata largely through um, big community efforts in the library world, but also at the fonts like the ones that like um, Michigan ran ar around uh, comics, um, graphic possibilities, um, and several others. Um, so uh, this has sort of been like the thing that we both like are most enthusiastic about in working with Wikidata is bringing people together to do that thing all at once. Okay, we're going to get into what the Black Teacher Archive is. Um, our Wikidata project focused on the Black Teacher Archive, also called the BTA. The Black Teacher Archive is a digital portal host at the, hosted at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Um, the project lead for the BTA is archivist Micah Broadnex, who is not here today, so we're not going to delve too deeply into the BTA project itself. Um, what I do really want to note is, is what the BTA is and why it's an important collection with data that needs to be brought to light. So the BTA is a digital portal centralizing the materials of African-American educator organizations, which were historically called Colored Teachers Associations. The bulk of the collection is comprised of 20th century journal publications spanning the Jim Crow era through the Civil Rights era. It provides free access to digital surrogates of materials from about 70 archival repositories across the US, particularly in the South and over 50,000 pages authored by African-American educators. So this is a treasure trove of documentation vital to a true understanding of the history of US education. And it tells the stories of black educators, um, their impact on black life during Jim Crow and the social and political organizing of black educators and their role in the civil rights movement. Um, some context for how the idea of Wikidata Edison came about and why Wikidata. And um, as, as Christine hinted at before, we are both pretty obsessed with Wikidata. About a year ago, I had a Gutman colleague, uh, Lindsay Whitaker, who's the Open Scholarship Librarian at Gutman. Uh, she was talking to Micah about the possibility of a Wikidata, uh, a Wikipedia Edison for the PTA. And um, I was simultaneously and separately thinking about a Wikidata Edison for the PTA. So um, they had never heard of Wikidata, and um, I started to tell them what it is and its great potential for enhancing discoverability of this un underrepresented data set and telling the story of the BTA through the linkages that would be created uh, between Black educators and schools and organizations and then linkages that like reach out beyond the BTA into the world. Um, so they were on board. Wikipedians don't hate it. Um, so we also really like the idea of supporting a more inclusive approach to describing collections and to have people feel truly empowered to engage in knowledge creation. Um, the project team had no experience planning a Wikidata edit-a-thon. Gutman Library had no experience hosting one. So we decided to host a soft event with a small targeted cohort of participants to test our planning process, our training materials, and gather participant feedback. Uh, we held the edit-a-thon during the summer and sought participation from a cohort of Harvard Library interns, uh, plus summer interns working directly with Micah Broadnax. Here's the project team. It's me, Lindsay, Christine, uh, Christine's awesome summer intern, Sarah Bernstein, and Micah. All right, pre edit on tap. These are the, the deliverables. The data information needs. Wiki project page. This was one of the first things that we started, we created and started working on. Um, it, it, it defines the project aim and scope 
describes the collection focus and crucially becomes a one-stop portal for all edit-a-thon resources. Um, it's important to note that the Wiki project page is a work in progress throughout the entire process of edit-a-thon planning. It's not a one and done. Um, if it's meant to serve as a one-stop resource, um, then it's continually evolving. The language on the page can be continually refined. Uh, data and documentation can be continually added and updated as you work on them. Okay, so this is going to sound really obvious, but um, it's really important to lay out specifically which properties you expect editors to be able to add to each wiki, wiki data item. Um, for the BTA event, we provided guidance for two instance types, humans and organizations. This is helpful for both new wiki data, data editors who we found uh, may not know which statements require references, for example, or experience wild decision fatigue at the vast range of things that they could be expressing. Um, and for experienced editors, uh, they tend to appreciate knowing which statements serve your project's goals and knowing what's sufficient to consider an item described enough for the purposes of the event. This is also a problem with catalogers and other librarians. They need to know what's enough. Um, if you don't know where to start on this, uh, you can look at uh, other, other wiki project pages that have dealt with similar items and copy and adapt the markup for tables on their wiki pages. Copying and pasting is your friend. Um, and, test, test, and test out your choices by creating examples example items to see whether you're at, what you're asking for is realistic with the data sources that you can provide or where there are decision points where editors may need more specific guidance. We had the good fortune of having an intern, uh, Sarah, who we showed you in the previous picture, um, who was great at research, um, but also really new to Wikidata, and she provided valuable feedback for improving this and other content. Um, in anticipation of multiple editors working simultaneously during your event, you'll want to provide some lightweight way for them to communicate which items they're working on so as to not get in each other's way. Even if you're all in the same room and asking questions in real time, it's helpful to have a place to share notes about specific items and to park questions that can't be answered immediately. In the examples shown here, we supplied names of organizations as a starting point for editing, as well as some data points to help participants navigate these choices. For example, we expected that some folks would be interested in states that they have more knowledge of, so like they want to edit things about color teachers associations from Texas. Um, we used a, sh used a shared Google sheet for this. Um, you could use any kind of shared like collaborative spreadsheet program um, and referred to this working document as the workbook. Um, and as we put together the workbook and tested item creation, we identified some messiness in our data and decided to, that tidying up our list of persons and matching them with uh, existing wiki data items where possible would head off confusion for our edit -a participants. A stuff like this might be optional for your own data, um, but for ours, uh, it, it like, well, in general, it doesn't hurt to examine your data and just reassure yourself that it isn't a mess, but <laughs> ours was. Um, so we learned that in the case of our data set, there were many personal names with initials rather than first names and women referred to by their husband's names. And we concluded that we should make an attempt at reducing unnecessary ambiguity for edit-a-thon participants because this seemed like a work-stopping issue. Um, and so we did that wherever possible. Um, and we again benefited from having an intern, which is awesome, I recommend it. Um, uh, I, I, taught her, I taught her open refine and she picked it up right away and um, uh, she did some reconciliation and identified some systemic errors that originated from upstream data sources. Um, through her efforts, we were able to supply more accurate names and point participants toward Wikidata items for many Color Teachers Association presidents on our list. Um, we also wanted to evoke a sense of the impact of participants' contributions. New Wikidata editors might initially feel like they're updating a web page about one person in like kind of a weird stilted way. Um, and we wanted them to see that they're helping to create a rich graph of connections. Um, we also wanted them to see that graph grow and become more interconnected as the work progressed. Uh, while a full graph of all the things that they're adding and connecting to is too much for a screen or a human brain, we found that we could use the Wikidata query service and some filters to create a visual that everyone could see their work in. Um, our participants uh, were largely, uh, oh, oops, hey, are we missing, we're missing a slide. Missing a slide? Where's a slide? What, what, what are you trying to do? Oh, oh no, I, I had it in the wrong order. Go, it's your turn. We're not missing a slide. Okay, training resources. Okay, learning about Wikidata. 
So uh, edit bomb participants may have little or no Wikidata experience. It's very helpful if participants can come into the edit account with at least a very basic understanding of what Wikidata is, and even better if they have some familiarity with what editing Wikidata looks like. Use resources that already exist. There are great ones. We found the three-minute introduction to Wikidata video by the National Library of Wales, which I will spare you all the horror of my trying to pronounce, um, available on YouTube to be a really good and clear intro. Uh, we also found the interactive Wikidata tours, which are, which are about five-minute in, um, interactive uh, tours to be very helpful. You can assign quick, clear introductory material as pre-work via event communications with participants. Instructions for participants. So uh, we did in-person in training the day of uh, the Editathon. We felt that it would be most useful to actually walk through creating a Wikidata item with participants. Uh, we created a handy step-by-step -step introduction sheet for participants. And on the day, to the day of the Editathon, we set aside time at the start of the event to walk through the instructions with everyone following along and creating the same item using the Wikidata sandbox. Uh, we did tailor our instructions to be specific to our collection and data set. Uh, we found it helpful to make available paper printouts of the step-by-step -step instructions for uh, reference um, during the event. And we found out the hard way that you do have to remind everyone to switch to the real Wikidata when they start actual editing on activity. Uh, information sources. So it's important to go over the main sources of information for Wikidata statements, particularly if participants will need to search for search specific di digital resources and databases, not just be like Google searching for, for things. The website for the Black Teacher Archive was where the basic information about all the teacher associations could be found. We needed to demonstrate how to browse the BTA site and how to search for digital images of the BTA materials. Participants also needed to look beyond the BTA site and digitized collections for biographical information about the people represented in the BTA. Oftentimes, the richest sources of biographical information were digital newspaper archives, which we also had to show them. Uh, major databases of prominent African-Americans, such as the Encyclopedia of African-American Education and Black Past, generally did not include the educators we were searching. And this did help to affirm in our minds the idea that we were working toward filling a serious knowledge gap. And it's me. Okay. Um, so our participants were largely already aware of the collection. A lot of them were interns who were working directly with the collection for their own research. Um, uh, but uh, we we had slides and scripts to like describe the collection, um, get everybody on the same page, um, make them familiar with the different parts of the site, um, as Katie just said. And um, we also wanted to use the slides and the scripts to articulate goals for the day, introduce Wikidata and its relationship with more familiar Wikimedia platforms. Um, despite what I said earlier, we all we both love Wikipedia very much. Um, uh, provide, we also wanted to provide visuals for linked data concepts, which are just kind of hard to describe to people when you're trying when they haven't used Wikidata before. Um, and also to help keep speakers such as myself on schedule. Um, you may also want to um, share files directly with your participants as an accessibility best practice uh, when you do this. All right, participant feedback. Um, it's good to get participant feedback, but it was actually critical for us since our goal was to learn from this small edit-a-thon um, the things that, uh, what things worked and what things could be changed or improved for a uh, major one that we would be planning in the future. So we created two surveys. The first was a pre-event survey. We wanted to know whether people had um, a Wikimedia login, whether they had experience with Wikidata or other Wikimedia projects, um, rather than just assuming that people were coming in with no experience. Um, having real data on whether participants are coming in with Wikidata experience can affect decisions about training and what kind of pre-work you need to assign. Um, we found that all the folks who registered had no Wikidata experience, but a few had Wikimedia accounts and some limited Wikipedia editing experience. Um, we also did ask about dietary restrictions, and um, we did not ask about accessibility needs because our cohort were known interns who might have, who probably would have answered those questions as a part of their internship process. But um, in future, we would definitely ask about accessibility needs. The post-event survey was a key source of information for gauging the outcomes of our event and the things that we wanted to learn from it. Um, we asked participants to sign into a, an event dashboard as well, um, which quantified their edits in Wikidata, and we left that open for a couple of days subsequent to the edit-a-thon to capture any edits in the immediate aftermath. Um, but the numbers weren't our primary focus, and uh, though they did provide another data point for our discussion of the outcomes. Um, we, uh, and, all right, there we go. Um, 
sorry, I did this out of order. Um, uh, we also looked at the item quality evaluator um, uh, and uh, integrality uh, to assess whether items that we created were robustly described. The visual here shows an integrality table that Sarah, uh, our intern, uh, put together to show color-coded levels of property coverage for organization items on a state-by-state -state basis. Uh, the dark blue areas indicate groups of items where the column's property was applied evenly to every item and or 100% to every item and the letter colors uh, where the coverage was thinner. And what I forgot to say earlier about the post-event survey was that not everybody fills it out, um, but you can still learn something about whether anybody did the free work um, and whether your presentation materials were tailored to your audience and so forth. Okay, so we did an event, the project team did an event debrief um, after the survey results came in, and we actually got two thirds response rate, which is actually yeah. really excellent. Um, we talked about the things that went smoothly and didn't from our own perspectives as organizers, and we discussed the survey feedback. The main takeaways from the feedback were um, that uh, people do not all do pre work, plan for it. Um, <laughs> our training materials and resources were overall clear and useful. Um, many people felt that they needed more time for editing and, and just more physical space. The space that we had the initial edit on in was very small. Um, some participants wanted more social activities such as icebreakers. And I think when you have a project team full of extreme introverts, that's hard to think about. Um, and uh, people have uh, some, uh, people have very different needs for collaborative work. So some people really are ready to just work on their own and some feel much more confident working in groups with others. Um, and, and one person even suggested doing some kind of gamification or, or like competition. Um, uh, participants were overall excited to learn about Wikidata and they did feel empowered. Um, and some participants, this is the most exciting thing maybe, could see applying new, new Wikidata knowledge to their own work. Uh, so um, we're planning another edit-a-thon um, for November this year, um, and it's going to be another in-person event, strongly influenced by all the, our findings from the first one. Um, and that's a link to our Wiki project page if anyone's interested or wants to give us advice about how to get people to do the pre-work um, or, or any other uh, things that you've, you've, you've learned from holding your own events. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, did you find going back to the slide on the quality indicators that you showed on Wikidata? Oh, yeah. That would be a big slide 29. You are correct. Yes. Um, nice. I wanted to ask a bit more about how those criteria were selected. Um, just, just in, like, in terms of like how, how did you happen to like land on these particular um, uh, 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 properties. Oh, the, these properties. Yes. Um, it had a lot to do with, first of all, looking at the information available on the BTA site, since that would be the first stop that participants were expected to make for for when they were looking for resources, um, and seeing what kind of information can we reasonably expect everyone to be able to supply, right? Yeah. We can reasonably expect that they'll be able to say what country an organization is, what state it's in. Um, and, you know, and, and then there are also certain statements that um, for the purpose of the project, administrative purposes, you wanna make sure you have, such as has works in the collection. And also, have, um, what is the other one, the project one? I oh, uh, unfocused list of. Un unfocused list yeah. of. Um, and that would be your project. So <laughs> breaking things. Um, so so yeah. Uh, and 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 then there were other pieces of information that we knew we would have, such as when when an organization, the inception date, the dissolving date, things like that. Yeah. Okay. So as far as the knowledge of, of the database that you were working on, in, in, in yeah. yeah, it was like based on like what we could reasonably supply to people consistently. Um, so we had divided up um, our documentation into like essential properties that were like. These are not the things that Recoin is going to show you as like the important things um, for that instance type. Um, we were we were basing that on what we thought that could be what we thought could be applied to every single item, um, and uh, within reason. And uh, the I mean, and also like some of these had to do with the, the nature of the kinds of queries that we wanted to be able to run, like the um, like the follows merged into followed by parts. 
um, had a lot to do with um, all of these organizations basically got merged into um, uh, merged with the white teachers organizations and sort of got subsumed into them, which is part of why they're not particularly like well, their, their histories aren't as well represented because they just kind of like stopped existing um, at, at, like as a result of, of well, his, historical reasons that you can imagine. Yeah. There's a question about the quality thing. Uh, do you guys keep track of which statement has re references or either reference, non reference statements? We do know about the reference. So, our documentation was very specific about which things we absolutely needed to include references for. We didn't track that. Um, we were, um, so yeah, this, this query doesn't cover that. Um, but it, my recollection was that we had a, like, it was pretty consistent. Like, I think we, we really ground that into everyone. Well, I, um, how to the importance of adding references to support your assertions. And so the, the notion that your assertion is not like absolute truth, but you're making the assertion because you saw this in a reference. That was something we really emphasized during the training. Um, and so I, I, we can't say for certain, like what percentage have references, but we really um, emphasize that. And um, it is a part of, so on the, on the wiki project page, we have these very thorough charts for essential and additional properties. And one of the columns is, do you, do you really, do you need a reference, you know? So, yeah. And the answer is mostly yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the verify, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks. Thank you.